Hey everybody, this is Autobot John, and I promised in my latest video with my custom Michonne that I would do a review of uh, what I thought of The Man of Steel. So if you haven't seen The Man of Steel yet, I advise you to stop the video uh, in a couple of minutes because I will be going into a few spoilers. Um, what I thought I could have done better, what I really thought did really good um, so I don't want to ruin the movie for anybody who hasn't seen it yet so if you haven't seen it uh, in a few minutes I'll tell you when but um, I don't want to ruin it for you it's one of the best movies I've seen in a long long time um, so anyway um, it's a really good movie I think Henry Cavill Cavill, Cavill, is, Cavill I think that's how you pronounce his name I think he killed it as uh, Kal-El Superman um, the story is really good. The action is freaking incredible. Uh, I went and saw it with a couple of my buddies, um, and uh, one of them is not even a Superman fan, and I think he really enjoyed it. So, A plus to that. Um, and, um, so, anyway, yeah, I recommend it to any true Superman fan. Um, I'm going to do this review with my buddy uh, Christopher Reeve standing right here who is my Superman, but uh, even I walked out of this film like, uh, kind of like Jack Nicholson, you know, you got replaced as the Joker, dude. Heath Ledger, cop, he really destroyed it. I really think the new Superman was better. There, I said it. I can't believe I'm going to say this, man. Um, but I really think that Henry Cavill's, the new Superman, the Man of Steel, I think it, surpassed the Christopher Reeve version I don't know but anyway so that's it uh, just, I give it well I'd give it two thumbs up but I'm holding my uh, tablet so I give it two thumbs up see one two um, it's really good you don't even notice the time it's a very long movie but you don't even notice in fact I, I didn't even know it, it had been that long um the fighting scenes are incredible, really, really incredible, and that's really all I really have to say about the movie, so um, just go see it. The more support it gets, the better, and I really think Marvel, you know, you guys were the main guys on the block, Avengers, Iron Man, but uh, I don't know, man. I think DC has got a winner here, and uh, you might have some competition coming, guys. So anyway, that's it. If you haven't seen it yet, stop watching. I uh, appreciate all your views. Um, leave comments. And after you go and see it, watch the rest of my video and uh, give me your comments below on what you thought of it and what you think could have changed, what you thought was good. Uh, love to hear your opinions. Now, to my real review of the movie. I grew up with The Man of Steel being Christopher Reeve is my Superman. And so, honestly, I don't feel it's fair to compare these two movies, but here we go. Here's my comparison of The Man of Steel and the original 1978, uh, 76, uh, Superman. Um, actors. They went with an unknown for the original Superman and Christopher Reeve. Nobody really knew who he was, you know, and it worked. I mean, because forever he'll be known as Superman. The new guy, Henry Cavill, I've only ever seen him in The Immortals, and it was a really good role for him, I guess, but I really think that there are certain actors that are born to play certain roles, and I really think that Henry Cavill made a very good Superman, and uh, I think they made a good choice. Um, he's more human-like in this one. You can relate to him more. He's basically just trying to find his way in the world, you know, even though he has all these abilities. He's, he doesn't know if he should come out and reveal himself, and, and you, you know, so you relate to him. You know, if anybody's ever felt odd or weird, uh, out of place, that's how he feels in this movie. Um, I thought that it was cool that we spent a lot more time on Krypton in this movie because, honestly, in my opinion, um, I kind of think this new Krypton is a lot more impressive than the original Krypton, which was a block of ice. Um, and that's not saying that I didn't like the original one. It's just a, it's cool that you saw their customs, you saw their um, technology more, you heard backstories on them. Um, you know, you got to know the planet a lot more before it gets blown up. Um, 
Jarrell, or Jor-El as they called him, um, way better. Uh, Marlon Brando did an outstanding performance as the original Jor-El, but, um, I mean, he was old. He didn't really do much, couldn't really do much. I think the fact of the matter is, I think that Russell Crowe killed it. He not only made you care about his character and, you know, what Krypton was going through, but you could see he was a warrior. You could see that uh, he was tough, and uh, I think him and General Zod made a pretty good uh, uh, fight sequence. Um I didn't really care for Laura. Laura, I think it was her name. Um, I don't know. It's sometimes I thought maybe she was not as emotional as maybe she should have been. You know, like you're getting ready. Your planet's about to blow up. Zod is going to basically try and kill your son, and you don't even shed a tear. Um, that was a little weak for me. Um, I think she was a good character still but um i think the original one showed more emotion over losing her you know kal -El. um and here we go this is the big part of this uh the story um and if you haven't stopped it by now then too late but i will say that the new story is in my opinion it it's weaker than the original um, and here's my reasons why. Um, number one, you, you know, Krypton gets destroyed. Jarrell dies uh, by the hands of Zod. Um, you know, basically the the story's still there. I feel that maybe Kal El growing up on Earth was a little like rushed in this in the Man of Steel because I mean there are at the beginning of the movie it is a little bit after he gets sent off a planet and, and, you know, Krypton explodes. The movie just kind of, like, sequences itself. Like, okay, this has to happen, this has to happen, this has to happen. It, it doesn't feel like everything flows together. Like, there's certain parts in the movie to me where it's like, you know, he saves this person and then he's here, but then all of a sudden he's here and it's like they explain it, but it's like um, you didn't really stop and you just kind of threw everything together. Um... The original Superman, you know, it shows him growing up a little bit. It shows um, them find him, and, you know, it shows him um, lose his father, and then, you know, he get, he finds the crystal, which basically is telling, you know, calls to him. So I thought there was, in the original Superman, there might have been a little more development of the character before he becomes the, you know, Man of Steel. In this one, it's like he gets to Earth, and he's already an adult, and um, you, you only get to see him as a kid and teenager through backs, back, or what they call flashbacks, and that's not a terrible thing. I can see why they did that, but I don't know. Some of it just felt like it was rushed. Um, other than that, it's it, I had no other problem with that. Um, I felt that maybe the story... The, the the story kind of jumped in too quickly. First of all, Lois Lane, in my opinion, is the Amy Smart made a good Lois Lane, but she's one of those characters that honestly, she, I didn't really think she, she could have been left out of the movie. It wouldn't have made a difference to me um, because I think it's a mistake that she already knows who he is. It kind of takes away the mystery of it, you know. So I'm sitting here the whole time like, well, why do you even need a secret identity if she knows who you are? But with that being said, that doesn't take away from the fact that it's still a great story. Um, so basically the emphasis of the story is that he grows up, he becomes the Man of Steel, and, or Superman, whatever you want to call it, and Zod comes after him, not for revenge. That was what I thought was interesting, that they didn't go with the Superman 2 story where, you know, Zod just wanted to punish Kal-El for what jor had done to him. But it almost seemed as if Zod was trying to get Kal-El to join him at first. Um, Zod was basically just trying to continue his race, and um, he was just ruthless about how he did it, though. He didn't care who got in his way. And that's just all there was to it. Um, the fight sequences were incredible. Although, maybe it's just me, but I thought Feora was more tougher than Zod half the time. I mean, this this chick was kicking Superman's ass around like he won't nothing. 
Um, and then somebody explained to me who the big guy was in the fight in Smallville. Um, who who was that big guy that was beating the hell out of Superman? It wasn't Zod, so who was it? Um, I was curious this bit. I, I thought the fighting sequences were really cool, except toward the end. Um, I thought maybe less was more. Because I started watching it and it's like, oh cool, they're going through buildings, you know, oh it's the great, it's like Justice League come to life, you know, the Superman the animated series, the battling that happens in those shows, oh this is awesome. But then all of a sudden they start just destroying building after building, him getting tossed through buildings, him fighting in the air, and then eventually it's like, oh okay, I've seen this before, you know, it's it, it got a little bit repetitive. Not saying it wasn't great, but it, it just got to the point where it's like, uh, yeah. This is the same thing I just saw. Um, with that being said, I think the fighting maybe could have been slowed down a little bit because it's it's kind of like when you watch Transformers. You can't really tell who's hitting who and because it just looks like a bunch of junked up metal together. And the only time you could really tell is because Optimus Prime was red and blue, and, you know, so he stood out. It, it kind of was the same thing with this because they would fight and, you know, it was so fast, so violent of a fighting that if, honestly, if kal wasn't wearing a red cape, you wouldn't have known it was him uh, because the fighting is, that's just how quick it is. The destruction is incredible. And like I was telling my friend, the one thing I would say about this is he really didn't save too many people. Uh, you got to figure that while all this is going on, Metropolis gets fucked up in this movie. I mean, it literally just gets fucked up. And, uh, yeah, imagine how many people lost their lives, man. And, and, you know, so he wasn't really as heroic as the original Superman. Like, I don't think he would have stopped to save a cat out of a tree or, or you know, stop a crime that was going being committed. And so... Um, I kind of like the fact that he wasn't the average Superman. He wasn't a Boy Scout like the Reeve version was, which it wasn't a bad thing. So, personally, I really think The Man of Steel was a great movie. Oh, my God, it was an excellent movie, and I probably will have to go see it again. Um, not that I missed anything, just it was one of those movies I walked out and I had goosebumps because I'm very excited. It, was, it is a very exciting time to be a DC fan or... And just to be a Superman fan, because let's face facts, I'm just being dead honest, we've had so many disappointments as of late. If you're a Superman fan, first of all, Superman Returns, it's not a good movie. I mean, it's, it's an okay movie, but it, it just... It, it didn't capture it, you know. Nothing against Brandon Ralph, but it, the movie just wasn't good. It, it really wasn't. Um, you've got Smallville. Started off great middle of it was excellent they blow it in the last season the last season was a joke and the final episode was crap you take a great character like dark side who in comic book lore and in the animated series dark side is like superman's almost number one villain besides luthor the only guy that can actually really hurt him and you turn him into a cloud of smoke then on top of it, all these all the seasons we've been waiting to see him in the suit, and you jip us on it. You don't really show him that in the suit, except for like a faraway view. It, it's really pathetic. Yeah, I really thought that's what killed the series for me. Maybe you guys don't feel the same way. So hopefully, with this new Man of Steel movie, a lot of people will come back to the Superman genre because not trying to be mean to Marvel fans I'm a Marvel fan as well but I'm tired of them hogging the spotlight you know the Iron Man the Avengers the the, the Captain America Thor it's all good and everything but I'm just sick of it you know it's it, it's 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 like you know I want Marvel to have some competition and hopefully the man is still is that competition we've been waiting for because I really think Superman is one of those characters that, whether you like him or hate him, you have to admit that if it wasn't for him, you wouldn't have other characters because he was one of the very first mainstream comic book characters. So if anybody deserves a, a reboot that was worthy, it's this. It's the Man of Steel. Um, and number two, I'm with a lot of other people. I'm batman out. You know, the Nolan Batmans were cool, but, you know, Batman's one of those characters it's like he's had so many different reboots and it's just getting old so it's time for us to jump on board another bandwagon now my personal opinions is i've heard that they want to do a justice league movie and i'm all for it but 
you better introduce some more characters. I mean, what about Flash, um, Aquaman? Um, you know, we have Green Lantern, and I think Ryan Reynolds made a great Green Lantern, but the story wasn't that good. The villain was really pathetic, and I really think they should have just stuck with Sinestro as the vil as the main villain. But uh, hopefully, they'll try that again. Um, Wonder Woman, you know, you, you've got to get all these in line before you even think of doing a Justice League movie. And if DC is listening, you, just because you had one lightning bolt hit and it's a success, don't take it easy. Don't stop. Don't think you've got it wrapped up because Marvel's going to come back and kick your ass. I mean, let's face facts. They've got Iron Man 4 probably in the works. they got Avengers 2. Captain America, the Winter Soldier, Thor, you you haven't even seen what they have to offer yet. So don't get cocky and say just because Man of Steel is breaking box office records in its opening weekend that, you know, you guys have it in the bag. You don't. You have a long way to go, but you're on the right track. And I really think that the Man of Steel is the movie you guys need to get back on track and get back into this fight. So good luck with that. I hope there's going to be a sequel. I've heard they've already been work, talk about a sequel. Um, don't change the costume. I don't care what the fans say. This is the Reeve version with the red trunks, the yellow belt, the light blue suit, and the symbol on the back of the cape. That's the Reeve version. This is the new version, and I like the new version. It works. It's really good. And the other thing is that it's so the the action's so fast in this movie. I didn't even notice all the little designs on him and everything. So you don't really notice it. Plus the belt didn't. I didn't really know to pay attention to that. You know, it, it, it everything fit in well. So don't change it. Don't do the Amazing Spider-Man thing and change his costume because you know I don't care if it makes people happy. It doesn't need to be changed. You did a good job. The guy who made the new suit, is it's excellent. Don't change it. Trust me on this one. Just leave it as it is. But with that being said, guys, I really think The Man of Steel was a great movie. Um, I'm not being biased because I'm a Superman fan. Um, I'm just saying it was a really great movie. Story was great. And they changed enough of it that it didn't feel like a reboot. It really didn't feel like um, they were, you know, oh, um, this is just them saying we're going to try again. This felt like a generally brand new Superman. This this didn't feel like a reboot at all. This actually felt more like a retelling, if you will. It felt like this is the new generation's Superman. So in my personal opinion, I grew up with Christopher Reeve as Superman, and that was cool and all, but that was my generation's. This is the new generation. This is the year 2013 through whenever, and I think that they have a really good Superman to start off with, and I hope they continue on the same path, and I'm a big fan, so I know I'm going to keep watching them, and um, I'm hoping that uh, the sequels are good, and uh, I just hope they don't mess it up, and uh, it's definitely worth watching. It's worth the 5 or $7, whatever you're going to pay. Um, I didn't see a 3D version of it, but uh, and, and honestly, except for maybe a couple of the fight scenes, I don't think 3D really would have made too much of a difference on it. But um, my personal opinion is whether you're a Superman fan or not, DC fan or not, go see this movie. Uh, I, I really think it's worth the price. It's worth the time, and uh, you won't be disappointed in it. So... This is Autobot John for his very first film review, which I'll probably have more coming. Um, leave me feedback. Let me know what you think. And if you have a different opinion of the movie, I'd love to hear your opinion. Put it down below. Um, no wrong answers here or there. And just because I'm a Superman fan doesn't mean I'm going to melt you with my heat ray vision through your camera. But um, I would love to hear what you thought of the movie, what you thought might have been able to have been changed, what could have stayed. Um Leave it below. Now, to the one thing I think could have been changed, the one thing that I really wish they had changed, number one, I didn't like the fact there was really no Fortress of Solitude. It was that ship. I didn't like the fact that it's really not the Fortress of Solitude. I thought that was a major part that got left out, but, you know, it works, whatever. Um, that's just me being, I guess, if you want to call me biased, whatever, but 
every Superman has to have a Fortress of Solitude. This one does, but he doesn't. Um, number two, I think it's stupid that Lois knows who he is already, because like I said, it takes away some of the the legend of Superman, you know. It was, I know it doesn't make any sense because all he did was put glasses on, but it was kind of the part that was funny that she's been working with him all these years and she has no clue who he is. She does now, though. I mean, think about it. She's going to be working with this guy for, you know, as long as he's going to be working there. And I mean, how is she not going to let it slip one day? Like, they're in a meeting and she's, like, causing Cal Al out of nowhere just by accident. I mean, come on. That's kind of stupid. I did think it was cool, though, that they do introduce him as Clark Kent at the end of the movie. You do see him put the glasses on. He does work for the Daily Planet. So you do know that there will eventually in the sequels be a part where, hey, something's going to get blown up. And guess what? He's going to do the famous run through the street and rip off the shirt. And, hey, he's Superman underneath. Which that does answer, ask, you know, it does raise one question. When he is dressed as Clark Kent, where does he hide the cape? And where does he keep his boots? That's one of my friends asked that question, and I did think about that. It's like, you know, okay, you're at work. How do you hide red boots all day? Where does he keep them? He doesn't have a briefcase. Interesting questions. But anyway, this is about John saying I hope you enjoyed the movie. And uh, like I said, I'd love to hear your comments. Leave me feedback. Let me know what you thought about it. And, um, yeah, later. And if you haven't seen it, go, go right now and go see it. Don't wait. Go see it. And if you've seen it, go see it again. All right, guys. Later.